Hey, thanks for joining me. Hope you're doing well. We should know by now that mountains and plateaus are not rock formations, but the stumps of giant trees that were cut down. They were silica-based, not carbon-based like today's trees. Watch the video No Forests on Flat Earth if you haven't yet explored this topic. Silicon Valley is what pushes all technology today, and it gets its name because silicone is great at storing and processing information. Computer chips are made from silicone, and this is why they're able to hold so much information. Quartz is a silicate made of pure silica, and many crystals used in healing and new age circles today are variations of quartz. Clear quartz is known as the master healer and can unlock psychic abilities. So much of what we're digging up as far as crystals are actually the remnants of these giant silica-based trees. In James Cameron's Avatar, which is actually a history of our not-so-distant past, the natives communicated with these spectacular trees and were given divine information. Imagine the information a tree could hold made of silica. All of these trees extended from the tree of life at the center of our plane by a vast root system. It was one giant organism. What we think to be a cave system is actually an old root system. These trees were huge and so were their roots. Side by side, a carbon-based root system is strikingly similar to the cave systems, the silica-based roots. Gems and crystals are most abundant in caves. As we know, trees have a complex root system where they're able to communicate with one another. Trees can transport carbon dioxide, water, and other hidden information we can't detect with our senses through their root systems. If you've ever been in a room with tons of large quartz, amethyst, etc., you know that the energy is powerful. Crystals have been known to store information, and this is why they oftentimes require energetic cleansing. Imagine what kind of information and energy was circulating among this worldwide system of trees powered by the same material. And we're told that quartz is a rock-forming mineral. Now, this definitely makes sense. So think about it. How can a cave be constructed naturally out of the ground? We're given the bullshit answer that limestone gets dissolved over time and forms caves. But again, these systems are all too similar to that of a root system. Most rivers used to be filled with these roots as well. The rivers contained the above ground roots, while the caves in part contained the below ground roots. Just some speculation. Look at these photos of giant crystals inside of cave systems. This is insane. I'm proposing all of these giant root systems used to contain as many of these crystals, but were stripped of them and are now lifeless. I mean, just look at some of the caves without crystals. To me, they appear stripped. They look dead. An uprooted tree shows small roots in various sizes hanging from the bottom. Stalactites and stalagmites are very similar to this. Again, keep in mind these trees were enormous and way sturdier, made of thicker material. So somebody has harvested these minerals and crystals. Where petrified wood is, we see sand. Petrified wood is made of precious gems and crystalline structures. When we compare this wood to the floors and sides of mountains, we see the similar gradient patterns. Pieces of petrified wood are pieces of these ancient trees. In these inland areas with large amounts of sand and in deserts, there's no access to the ocean, so the sand isn't coming from there. And what is this sand made of? Sand in inland areas are made of mostly silica and other materials, including forms of quartz. When a regular tree is cut down, dust flies. It starts covering the ground. I think you know what I'm getting at. Inland sand and deserts are not naturally forming, but were made from bits of silica and minerals that flew off of these organisms as they were cut down. As Vlad Hangen pointed out, some of the ancient Toltec pottery suggests that what's being depicted aren't merely crocodiles, but the quarry excavators used to get rid of these trees that we still use to this day. The ancient people probably saw these monstrosities and assume they were animals rather than man-made technology. Mount Meru is the magnetic mountain that lies at the center of our plane at the Arctic. The Tree of Life used to stand at the center, and it was cut down. As we know, mountains are tree stumps. It's said that the Tree of Life was encased in Mount Meru, but I'm speculating that Mount Meru is the remnants of the Tree of Life. In this Buddhist depiction, we see a vortex below the mountain, representing the vortex we go through when we enter the center. On this Mount Meru art piece from the Yun Dynasty, I couldn't help but notice how similar it looks to the Holy Grail, which when we drink from, we achieve everlasting life and abundant happiness. The Holy Grail, as we know, is an allegory for the center of our plane. 
Look at the Norse tree of life, Yggdrasil. Now look at this piece. Instead of a tree, there's a mountain, but the roots are still at the bottom. This tells me Mount Meru was the tree of life. On the maps of Hyperborea, there's a mountain placed at the center. There's four rivers coming out of it. On this Phoenician seal depicting Mount Meru, we see four streams extending out. This Navajo sand painting represents the four rivers as well, and X marks the spot. There's also four mountains surrounding what we know to be Mount Meru. These four mountains are seen throughout many depictions. This is a Hindu painting. Again, we see the four rivers converging to the center. The Garden of Eden was also said to have four rivers. I want to mention that in most of these depictions of Mount Meru and the Tree of Life, there's reference to the underworld. The underworld is where we want to go. They've tried to confuse us by telling us heaven is up high and hell beneath our feet. This is the reverse of truth. We want to go down under. That is where we will find heaven, where we must go to so we can exit this matrix and into a land of paradise. Plato described Atlantis as being shaped like three concentric circles of land divided by water, the shape of a bullseye. Mount Meru is said to be an invisible mountain. René Dalmal, a French writer, penned an unfinished novel in 1952 in which his characters theorize that Mount Meru, what he calls Mount Analog, is real and located at one of the poles. In the book he calls the mountain the door to the invisible. One of the characters proposes that the mountain itself is invisible because it's made of a material so dense that it bends light. This is considered a fiction work, but it still reveals to us many things about Mount Meru. The substrata of this territory are composed of material which have the property of inducing curvature in such a way that the region is encased in a shell of curved space. The author gives this illustration along with these words. The character explains there would be an optical illusion where you wouldn't even notice the mountain there and would naturally bend around the force field of curved space. He says the shell of curvature which surrounds the island is not absolutely impenetrable. That is not always, not everywhere, and not for everyone. At a certain moment and in a certain place, certain persons, those who know how and wish to do so, can enter. What this tells me is we need to be vibrating at a high enough frequency as to where this mountain and area around the mountain will become visible. Just like how the flaming sword put to guard Eden and Heimdallr in Norse mythology protects the bridge to Asgard, there is a force field around the mountain which will only let us in if we are of pure intent and heart-centered. So in the meantime, we must intend to create heaven on earth. Think only with our hearts and keep working on connecting with earth's energy via sun gazing and earthing. We can communicate with the sun, speak our intent towards it, and the same thing with the divine feminine energy that seeps through the soles of our feet when we earth. When we ask for guidance and help to be filled with love, knowledge, and the wisdom of the ages, we receive it. Ask and thou shalt receive. Soon enough, we're going to be drinking from the Holy Grail. We will enter Hyperborea, the Garden of Eden, Atlantis, Shambhala, whatever you want to call it. For those of you who haven't yet, search blood over intent and place your blood besides ours. This is the beginning of taking off the blinders this matrix has put on us. Look it up, do some reading, and when you're ready, upload your blood over your divine intent next to the rest of ours. We will all be blood brothers and sisters in this journey to Mount Meru. Hope you're all great. Stay centered. I love you all.